to RT Live. This is your hostess Kelly Spaulding with our local wood sculptor. This is Andrew Fullwood. We did do a feature review in our magazine and wanted an opportunity for our readers to learn more about you. I grew up in Hickory, which is a furniture capital. It used to be the furniture capital of the world. Mm -hmm. um, and so I come from at least five generations of furniture makers and I'm actually the outcast of the family. I'm known as the one who can't make furniture. Early on, I did a couple figures, human figures. The body itself is very interesting and both realistically the way it is, but also in abstracting it and seeing how much of a, a distortion you can impart onto the form and still keep it as a human form. Yes. And so then I started getting more into abstractions and a lot of the shapes of nature, the patterns, elements on different plants or animals. Uh, sometimes I'll take elements from a shell mm -hmm. or from a chitin or a micrographic image of a pollen mm -hmm. or a diatom and then sort of work with those shapes and fuse them together into one piece. I grew up in the woods as a kid, just roaming the woods and the creeks, digging up crayfish in the creek. And I was not just interested, but I was obsessed with nat natural forms and finding shells at the beach and hoping I would find a whale jawbone lying on the shore. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't turn back because I knew if I walked another 20 yards, I was going to find that big prize on the beach. And so anyway, I kind of marinated in that organic imagery, I think, as a child. And I was always reading the Tom Life encyclopedias. Mm -hmm. And I think that imagery kind of... I internalized it and that now it's it's been infused with emotion and my life's experiences and and I think it's starting to come out now in the sculpture the abstract imagery that comes to my mind um, really surfaced later and I'm not quite sure why but then the older I get the more of it that comes to me and sometimes I can't shut it off I just there's times where, especially when I'm really busy carving, that uh, I, I can't go to sleep because the ideas just keep coming and coming and coming, and, which is really beautiful in a yeah. way. It's very distracting though. This is one of my early abstract pieces over here. It's called Expecting One. It's the first of four expecting pieces so far and that's an ostrich egg inside the tree is a hickory log it, hurricane fran knocked down a hickory tree in my yard and so for some reason the elements of fertility are and the rhythms of life cycles are just fascinating to me how we come to be from something that's invisible how does it grow into us gotcha. that's one form of, of our origins the other is where we come from uh, ancestrally and how did we come to evolve to be an animal that can make sculpture, that can write poetry, that can write, play music. Um, to me those are some of the more interesting things in life. And so that, that um, led me to a career in medicine of course mm -hmm. and psychiatry even further. And so it's all tied together for me. Wood will split on you. It's got living texture that you have to work with. And sometimes those cracks work in your favor and sometimes they work against you. And a lot of times I'll fill up the gaps in the wood. This had a, a big gap here, which I, I plugged in, make wedges out of wood and then fill them in. But then other times the, the lines or the cracks can offer contour. Texture and contour. The wood can limit you. You can't go against the grain. You can't carve a hand this direction. If you were going to carve a hand, it would have to go with the grain. Otherwise, they're very vulnerable to, to breaking off. Mm -hmm. So the wood will limit you that way. And I've carved into a piece of wood with uh, a, a composition in mind. And then I got into the middle of the wood, and there's a big cavity inside. And so I had to change the design, which sometimes I'm not happy about, but many times it forces you in a creative direction that you would not have gone yeah. to begin with. 
So I think it can really, that's what I like about wood, is that it can stretch your imagination in ways you never would have gone. Mm -hmm. And wood naturally grows into organic shapes anyway that are very interesting to begin with. Yes. And sometimes that in itself can kickstart an idea of a composition. <laughs> we've got such amazing things in front of us, I'd like to go to your workshop and take a look at things in progress. Uh, walnut is a particularly nice wood to carve. It's like carving into butter at times. It's not too hard, not too soft. I'll show you a piece of cherry. I got hold of some cherry recently, and you can see how that's yeah. about split in half. Yeah. <laughs> and I've always wanted to carve cherry, but I see that I'm going to have to be very careful with that. <laughs> a lot of my images start off, they just appear mm -hmm. in my head. Yeah. A complete composition will just appear out of nowhere. Um, it's like those diving submarines that go to the bottom of the ocean. Mm -hmm. It's all black, they turn on the headlights, and then suddenly there's this strange creature no one's ever seen before. For some reason, they come to me. And I don't always know what they're about, but when I'm working on the carving, I sort of pay attention to what I'm thinking about and what it reminds me of and what's on my mind the more I'm carving. Sometimes if, if I don't write it down, I lose it. Right. But not often, a lot of times, once it's there, it's, it's there and so these are some of the early sketches for, for this. And you can see I draw it from four different angles. This is from one side, this is from another, this is from the side. It's three-dimensional and it rotates. It's, it's like a computer program and it rotates and sometimes they'll divide, the forms will divide or they'll split or parts will sprout off of them. And then I'll write them down, and most of the time I stay true to the original form. Right. Although new ideas come along the whole way where I'm adding certain textures. I could do 30 of these and do different variations, and I have different sketches that have different variations on them. And for example, on some of this I could put a number of feather-like objects coming down. This, by the way, is going to be called Dream of the Blue Heron. And this past summer, when I was really did most of the work on it, excavating the wood, I was at, a, at a, a family lake home in Hickory, where I'm from, and there were a lot of blue herons that come up and land on the dock. And, and I noticed one of them one day was flying like a foot above the water, just gliding one foot endlessly above the water. and and. I think about why does he do that? I mean, I don't know if other people think about that, but to me, it's, he, was, he wasn't 10 feet up, he wasn't two inches, he was at one foot. And maybe he was looking for food, but most of the time they're shore feeders. They stand on the shore. And so to me, there was a certain pleasure that the bird was feeling, Just gliding one foot above the water. And there's an allurement to his environment and there's uh, that's part of the rhythm of nature, I think, is that that bird was designed to fly that way, and there must be something about it that's appealing to him. And so I think that's the way a lot of nature works, is we don't understand all the countless links and connections and interconnections, but um, sometimes when I'm carving, those are the thoughts that are always on my head, and if I can come across some imagery that represents that, I try to capture it. Talk to me about this This piece. one here? Yes. <laughs> What's called Catawba County Fair. <laughs> I grew up in Catawba County. And I, um, the first thing I would do when I get to the fair is I would go straight to the livestock, livestock exhibit because I love the animals. I did not grow up on a farm. And so seeing those big massive beasts was always a, a prize or a, a treat for me. And I loved seeing the big cows, and, and they had the big udders, and I used to reach through the stalls, and they had these big veins, and I would like push the vein and then <laughs> feel it pop back out. And, and I like, and I like uh, 
that smell of cotton candy and the hay of the fair all together. And so this is from a big log of cedar that was hollow in the middle. Well, was it naturally hollow or did you hollow it out? Naturally hollow, which was not to my, I would rather it not have been, but it was. And so uh, anyway, this is a calf that is a hungry calf that is waiting to be fed. This was a, <clears throat> a piece of, or it's from a maple tree that was in my yard and had died, and so we took it down. And this is actually the fork in the trunk, the, the bottom of the tree. The tree grew this way. And I've become more interested in infusing real elements of realism with abstract organic shapes. And it's kind of, to me, that's kind of how people are, is that we, have, we talk to each other and see each other in very realistic terms, but underneath the iceberg, there's a world of metaphor and imagery that is very abstract, and so, like dreams. Mm -hmm. And so, I like there to be surprise in a lot of my works, and so, I, I kind of like this view where people come in and they see this part first mm. and creates a curiosity. But then, then you can see that it's a woman that's having a dream. And I'm not sure what the dream is yet. Well, I've got a sketchbook full of ideas. And a lot of them are in many of these abstract forms. Um, I just wish I had the time to get to them. But I would like to do a, maybe a series of, of portraits with uh, dream material on top of their heads. Um, if I'll, I can't decide, well, I'll do an abstract piece and I love doing it. I just enjoy it so much. And, but then I start missing portraits. I like doing the portraits and then I'll go and do a portrait. And that's fun too, but then I have all this great imagery that I'd love to see manifest in the wood. So maybe if I start fusing them together, then some realism and some abstraction. I guess you, you feel a sense of satisfaction that you've said what you needed to say. And that, you know, I could spend another 20, 30, 40 hours on a piece, but it's not gonna change that much more about it. And sometimes I do go back and finish a piece later. I'll add a little something or change something. Thank you so much. This is Andrew Fullwood. If you want more information about him and the amazing work he does, please look us up. We're at www.artsymagazine.com.